very best thing that we can do for our family is to work on our marriage. So I want to talk about how to keep your marriage flying high. I'm going to give you a little flying lesson here, okay? And this is what they teach you when you're, when you're taking flying lessons. Number one, believe that you could crash. When you're taking pilot's lessons in the classroom part of it, they talk to you about feelings of invincibility. And they say, if you believe that you're bulletproof and 10 feet tall and you're not going to crash, you're the guy that's going to crash. Because pilots need to be sober-minded people. And they need to understand it could happen to me. Now, when Karen, Karen and I started our marriage ministry over 20 years ago, there was a couple, a uh, wonderful couple, and they had a wonderful marriage ministry. And they went all over the world uh, ministering to marriages, and they, they registered the success of their ministry by how many divorces were canceled. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of divorces were canceled. Or were, were canceled and uh, they, uh, they were on our program, we interviewed them, and then they divorced. This powerful marriage ministry, and in the letter, uh, he ran off with some gal, and in the letter that he wrote uh, explaining the failure of their marriage, he said, we didn't, we, I didn't listen to my own teaching. Karen and I could crash. We're not invincible, and we understand that. And when you understand that you're not invincible, you work on your marriage. The second, the second way that you keep flying high in your marriage is learn the laws of aerodynamics and respect them. There are laws of aerodynamics. I don't fear flying. The more you learn about flying, flying's the safest. Listen, flying is the safest method of, of transportation, right? Okay. Marriage is the safest relationship on earth. Did you know that with all of its warts, marriage is the safest relationship on earth? And did you know that the way that God designed it, you have a 100% chance of success in marriage? Did you know that? The marriage is the safest relationship on earth when you do it God's way. Well, you know, people, uh, I was on a plane one day and there was uh, three gals across the aisle from me over here. And this one gal that was closest to me was terrified of flying. She was throwing up in the air sick bag while we were at the gate. She had her mouth on that air. I felt so sorry for her. Well, you know, air is a liquid. When you fan yourself, you know, a lot of people think you're up in the air in a 747 and that, that plane is up in the middle of nothing. Air is, air is a very heavy liquid. And that's why a 747 with hundreds of passengers and all their luggage on board, when you see a ship in the ocean, you don't worry about it because you can see the water. Well, uh, oxygen is just like water. It's just a very heavy liquid. So when you understand the laws of aerodynamics, you don't fear flying. You, you, only, you just make sure that you don't violate the laws. When you break a law of aerodynamics, you're going down. You're going to get hurt real bad or you're going down. God created four laws for marriage. These are laws. In Genesis chapter 2, when God created Adam and Eve in the institution of marriage, here's what God said. The first words ever spoken after marriage was created. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, shall cleave unto his wife. The man and his wife were both naked and unashamed. Those are the four foundational laws of marriage. Those are laws. Those are not principles. Now listen, God said, for this cause a man will leave his father and mother. Well, how do we know that God wasn't just saying that to Adam and Eve? How do we know that God was also saying that to us? Because Adam and Eve didn't have a mother. God directly created Adam and Eve. They were the only people ever created that didn't have a belly button. So God says, for this cause, a man is going to leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. Well, here are the four laws of marriage. Number one, marriage has to be first. Now listen to me. When you break a law, you're going to get hurt. Marriage operates within God's laws. Karen and I violated every law of marriage when we first got married, and we were on the brink of divorce. And so when you understand the laws of marriage and you understand it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, how rich you are, how talented you are, no one is the exception. Gravity doesn't care who you are. It will drag you down and kill you. It doesn't care who you are. It's, it's an impersonal thing. The laws of marriage will help anyone succeed, or if you violate them, anyone will fail. Okay, number one law, marriage has to be first. For this cause, a man will leave his father and mother. The most important relationship that you had before you got married now has to be reprioritized in real terms. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. If your job comes before your marriage, your marriage is at risk. If your children come before your marriage, your marriage is at risk. If any friendship you have comes before your marriage, your marriage is at risk. Let me say Here's, here's the, so that's just true. But here's the special challenge 
that our generation has. It's called electronics. Now listen to what happened in this room. I don't know if it happened in other places, the, the rumble. So people say all the time, my spouse is sitting across the room from me, but they're not with me. They're, they're on their phone. They're texting. I can't, we're not, we're not connecting. One, one statistic I read said that one third of all affairs begin on Facebook. And one half of divorce petitions have the word Facebook on them. Okay. So I'm saying, if I, if I said to you, here, I would like to hand you this, and it's probably going to help you a whole lot have an affair or get divorced. Would you, would you accept that? And I'm not saying anything bad about Facebook. I'm saying you need a technology-free zone in your home where you are together and no one else is there with you. And if you can't shut your phone off or shut your computer down, it means it's in control of you. You're not in control of it. Technology is a wonderful servant. It's a terrible master. And technology is destroying marriages. It's keeping us from connected. If you're sitting in the same room, you're both on the computer talking to somebody else, you're not with each other. Karen and I used to come home. I would come home. We would eat together as a family. We would put our children to bed. We taught them to respect our marriage. They knew that they had a certain time, up to a certain time of night was their time. And then we put them to bed, and then it was our time. And we went into the bedroom, and we had a little area, a little sitting area. Where we went into the bedroom. We popped popcorn, and we, without television, without any, anyone or anything uh, you know, distracting us, we would sit and talk face-to-face -face for an hour or two. And I look back on that as some of the most important time in our marriage, connecting every single day. But I hear people right now telling me all the time, we just don't have any connection. You know, it's, it, but they're texting, they're, they're emailing, they're, they're on the telephone. They're, there's the constant intrusion there. The number one law of marriage is your marriage has to be first in real terms. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how busy you are. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter. No one is the exception. Your marriage has to be number one. Number two law of marriage is the law of pursuit. For this cause a man will leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And the word cleave there means like to run up a mountain. It is a very energetic word. Marriage is work. It only works when you work at it. And so marriage has to be first, but number two, you have to work at it. Gain instant access to EXO conferences and other dynamic marriage teachings with EXO Now, the new on-demand video streaming subscription from EXO and Marriage Today. For only $9 a month, you receive access to life-giving marriage series from Jimmy Evans, Dave and Ashley Willis, and other Marriage Today speakers. Access EXO Now from all your favorite devices. Sync content for offline viewing and enjoy world-class marriage content wherever, whenever. Learn how to be married and stay married. A better marriage is possible with the right information and a mutual commitment to success. Even the most unhealthy relationships can be healed. As part of your subscription, you have full access to the complete sessions from the latest EXO conference. Be the first to receive Marriage Today's best content with your subscription to EXO Now. Start your free trial today at exonow.tv. There has never been a marriage ever that you didn't have to work at. And the, the soulmate myth is this. The soulmate myth says, if I marry the right person, I won't have to work at the relationship. We're just gonna always be in love and always feel good. That is an absolute myth and it's a lie. If you marry your perfect soulmate, if you marry the perfect person, you're gonna have to work hard for the rest of your life at that relationship. Marriage is work and it only works. Some people think there's something wrong if I have to work at my marriage. There's nothing wrong if you have to work at your marriage. That's just the way that God created it. But that's the second law of marriage. The third law of marriage is the law of possession. They too shall become one. No one can dominate the relationship. No one can control the money and the other person doesn't have uh, input into the money. You can't control the children. You can't control the home without your spouse's input. Men and women are complete equals and marriage is two people as a team running the home and everything in the home. They too shall become one. Everything I have belongs to you, even children from a previous marriage. I'm giving them to you, everything you have. I take responsibility for the assets and the liabilities and every single thing we do, we will do together as a team. We didn't get married to live two separate lives. We got married to share our lives together and we're gonna run this thing together as a team. That is a law of marriage, that's a law. 
The fourth law is the law of purity. It says that they were naked without any shame. Well, they were naked without shame until sin came into the garden. And then when sin came into the garden, they began to hide themselves behind fig leaves. Because when purity was in the garden, they could have intimacy without any fear or shame whatsoever. But when they sinned, remember, when God came to Adam and said, what is this that you've done? Adam said, you gave me a defective woman. <laughs> you know, there's something wrong with that chick. And he wasn't just accusing Eve. He was accusing God. Okay. And then he went to Eve and Eve said, well, the devil made me do it. But the, the point is this. They couldn't trust each other any longer. I wounded Karen with my words. I was a verbal bully. I never took responsibility for my behavior. I never said I was wrong or sorry. And my wife, we had no intimacy whatsoever because she couldn't trust me and I, I shouldn't have been trusted. But the night that I came into the bedroom, we were on the brink of divorce. I told Karen to get out of the house. I, I walked in the room and I said, please forgive me. I'm wrong. I'm going to hang up my golf clubs because that was my priority. I worked at playing golf. I played golf all the time. Our marriage wasn't a priority. And for the first time in our married life, I apologized to my wife. And from that night forward, I began to take responsibility for my behavior and to say I was sorry. And the fig leaves began to drop off. We began to share things again, trust each other again. And we regained the intimacy in our marriage. Listen to me. Listen to me. I have absolutely no fear of flying whatsoever. If I'm on a commercial flight, that's where I sleep. My best sleeping is on an airplane. I never think about crashing because I know how safe it is because I understand the laws of aerodynamics. I don't fear divorcing. I know I could, but I don't pay attention. Marriage is the safest relationship on earth because it is suspended upon the laws of God which are 100% dependable. You are not the exception, and I am not the exception. We could fail, but we don't have to fail because marriage is a very stable relationship that is suspended upon the absolute laws of God. It has to be first. I have to work at it. We have to share everything together, and we have to take responsibility for our behavior. All of us can do that. All of us can do that. It may be making some changes, but all of us can do that. Okay. Number one, believe you could crash. Number two, learn the laws of aerodynamics or marriage dynamics. Number three, refuel the, fl the plane regularly and time your fuel. Now, here's the tip for pilots. You never trust the fuel gauge on an airplane because it only has to be wrong one time. Okay. How much gas we got? Oh, well, we got a half tank. Well, what if it's wrong? So as a pilot, you look to see, you look down into the wing and you look to see how much fuel you have. On my plane, we have four hours, four hours of fuel. And if we have a headwind, we have less than that. So we have four hours of fuel. And here's, here's the thing. When you land, you want 30 minutes of fuel in the tanks, at least 30 minutes of fuel. You never land saying, how much fuel we got? We got two minutes. You don't, don't do that. Okay. So we check it and we time it. Okay. What am I saying? So Here's three types of fuel that you need to run your marriage. Number one is God fuel. You need to wake up every morning, get in the presence of God, because the Holy Spirit gives you the power to love each other. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the personality of God, and he'll give it to you for free every time you ask for it. And the more dependent you are upon the Holy Spirit, the better spouse you're going to be. And when Karen and I wake up in the mornings, we get on each side, both of us have our side of the house where we have our quiet time. We, we take our fears, our hurts, our temptations, our needs to God. We ask him to touch us and heal us. And we ask him to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Then we're ready to love each other. We need God fuel. It's the most important issue in marriage is our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But see, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you understand when God tells us to love each other, we don't have that ability without the Holy Spirit. It's not innate within us, okay? Number one, God fuels, so we need that. So let me talk about timing it. I've been a Christian for 42 years. I got saved a week before Karen and I got married, so I know how long I've been a believer, okay? If I go two or three days without praying and being with the Lord, it changes my personality. Anybody agree with what I'm saying? So I'm gonna time that thing. And what I'm saying is I, I need to be with Jesus every day, and sometimes a couple of times a day. Since 1994, Marriage Today has used every medium at its disposal to strengthen families and marriages through its diverse ministry outreaches. Every day across North America and around the world, we provide help and hope through television, live events, social media, crisis coaching, 
and over 100 unique resources. There is a fierce battle being fought for marriage right now, but we can win it. We want to raise the standard. We want to unite families, restore marriages, and conquer divorce. At Marriage Today, we believe every marriage has a 100% chance of success if you do it God's way. Number two is spouse fuel, the second time of, type of fuel that we have. Meeting each other's needs and having fun. Very important to have fun together in marriage. W without sex and fun, marriage is a business relationship. And it's a rotten business relationship. You need to have sex and fun in marriage and meet each other's needs, and it's like fuel. Early in our marriage, Karen and I always had on our calendar a time, we, first of all, we had a weekly date night, a time to be together. We had time that we talked every single day, but always on our calendar, we four or five weeks at the mat, at max away, we would put our kids with my mom and dad. Uh, we were broke. We didn't have any money. So we literally would go 30 miles away and stay at the crummiest motel you've ever seen in your entire life. It's all we could afford. But we would literally go to the grocery store, walk into the motel room, lock the door, and stay there for 24 to 48 hours. And when we walked out, we were full of fuel. And we timed it. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> so you have to meet each other's needs, and you need to have fun in your marriage. And you have to time it. You can't go three or four weeks without being together. Every, every day, you need to have meaningful time together of connecting. But two or three times a week, you need to have special times together in goodwill, in the sense, and I, I ask Karen, I, I say to Karen, I say, are you okay? Well, she knows what that means. Is there anything I need to change to make you happy or, or to, to do what I need to do as a husband? I want to know the answer to that question. Are you okay? You need to be able to ask your spouse that and not be defensive about it. You both need to answer that question, yes. Number three kind of fuel is friend fuel. We need good friends in our lives that, uh, you know, that give to us and that we enjoy and that we enjoy being with. Church is critical in the days that we live in. All of Karen and I's best friends we met in church is critical in the days we live in. But let me say this, children burn fuel. <laughs> I didn't mean that to be a joke, but it's a pretty good one, isn't it, really? It, <laughs> children... Work burns fuel, right? And some people burn fuel. Problems burn fuel. But some people, some people aren't givers, some people burn fuel, okay? So here's what happened in marriage. We love each other, we get married, everything is great. We get up to altitude and we just think, isn't this fantastic? We met, we married, everything's going great. But we have some other things going on, so we had autopilot. We, we began to burn fuel. And then, and then when we're burning fuel and we're not taking on fuel, God fuel, spouse fuel, friend fuel, then we get together and we don't have the resources to meet each other's needs. And we're tired and we're distracted and we're frustrated because we're, we're just not meeting each other's needs. And then you wake up one day and you hear these words, I don't think I love you anymore. I don't know that I ever loved you. Because you can't remember having fuel on board. And that's when the marriage goes nose down and every bad thing begins to happen. Okay, You've got to fuel that plane. And you need to keep enough fuel on board that you have more than enough fuel. And then you're not running on fumes because your marriage needs that. And everyone depending on your marriage needs that. Here's the next tip. Don't overload the plane. Okay. If you've ever heard this saying, you're watching the news and you hear this, the plane crashed shortly after takeoff, 90% of the time that's because the plane was overloaded. Every plane has a center of gravity. And when you overload a plane, especially the back end of a plane, Either the plane won't take off, you can't get altitude and you crash, or if you do take off, you can't fly the plane. The plane is unmanageable. It's very difficult to land. So you have to keep your weight in balance the way it needs to be. Here's the issue of stress. Stress robs the joy of life. The stress of debt robs the joy of possessing. I don't believe all debt is wrong, but I believe if you have too much debt, it doesn't matter what you have, you're not going to enjoy it. If you have a house that's too expensive, if you have cars and all that stuff that's too expensive, it just robs. It just robs the joy of, of life and of possessing. Stress causes emotional fatigue, short tempers, 
in relational problems. Stress is a very high emotional consumer and love is an emotional commodity. And so when we're under stress, it is actually sapping the, our emotional capacity to relate to each other and we have short tempers, we're just spent because of stress. And, and most stress is self-inflicted. Some isn't, but most is. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Listen, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything pray. Did you know you can either pray or worry? And if you don't pray, you're gonna worry? You, you, know, you, you say, well, how do I develop a prayer list? Write down everything you're worried about and pray until you get peace. <laughs> your, your worry list is your prayer list. What are you worried about? That's your prayer list. And it says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. What do you mean with thanksgiving? I'm thanking him that he hears my prayers. He's gonna answer every single one of them. I'm thanking you in advance that you're a loving daddy and you care about me and I'm not stranded here on this earth by myself. Why would I not pray when I've got the most loving being in the world wanting to be on my side helping me out? Okay, so don't be anxious. Don't be anxious for one single thing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that passes all comprehension. You don't know why you have so much peace. It's just supernatural. Will guard your heart and mind. Wow, every time we hear Jimmy Evans, I learn something new. Every single time. He is one of the most gifted marriage teachers on the planet. We've been learning from him for years, and now it's a privilege to be working with him in this work of building stronger marriages. But just like you watching him now, I'm sure you took a lot away from that, and we wanna help you get even more access to Jimmy Evans' videos, because what you've just seen is actually just a portion of a full series from Jimmy Evans. That's right, you can see the entire series plus more marriage building videos on EXO Now. You can learn from the best experts, including of course, Jimmy Evans, mm -hmm. and get unlimited access for only $9 a month. This is the best way to get immediate marriage help and encouragement from the full Marriage Today video library. Yeah, and of course, all of our content is also included along with brand new exclusive marriage building content you can't get anywhere else. So don't miss out on the best marriage videos that are out there. Subscribe now at exonow.tv. Hey, we're Dave and Ashley Willis with Marriage Today, and we're gonna continue the conversation about flying high in marriage, how you and your spouse can soar, not just survive in marriage, but to thrive and have everything God intended for you. And we're gonna talk specifically today about what is referred to as the soulmate myth, this myth that a lot of people in our culture believe that if I really married my soulmate, we're gonna be perfectly compatible, we're always gonna get along, we're always gonna laugh at each other's jokes, there's never gonna be any hardship, and if hardship comes, it must mean I married the wrong person, and I need to get a divorce and start over with somebody else. And that myth is, is causing so much unnecessary yes. stress in marriages, and so many divorces. And so, sweetie, how do we break out of that myth and replace it with truth? Well, we need to understand that there's gonna be moments of incompatibility. Like, there's moments where you're not gonna necessarily get along, or you're gonna see certain issues differently, and that's okay. You know, first of all, you're a man and a woman, so generally you're gonna see things a little differently. And, you know, I think when we go into marriage, and we talked about this before, you know, we go in kind of wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, thinking that everything is gonna be perfect, and the moment we have trouble, we think, wait a minute, I made a mistake. But instead of looking at our disagreements as mistakes, look at them as opportunities to grow closer together. Because honestly, Dave and I, in our almost 18-year marriage, that's exactly what they become to us. You know, every time we've kind of reached a snag where we don't necessarily see things eye to eye, I've seen God miraculously get us through that and grow closer together. And so when you look at things like that, when you look at the tough times as opportunities to grow, you don't necessarily see it as incompatibility anymore. You see it as a great way to thrive in your marriage. Yeah, and, and the compatibility is overrated anyway. The happiest couples aren't the most compatible. They're the most committed. So I even true. look at heroes in the faith like Billy Graham and his, his wife Ruth, and they were just funny when talking about their marriage. They had yes. a great marriage. They were wonderfully committed. But Billy was once asked towards the end of his life, you know, like, how, how's your marriage? And he said, we've been happily incompatible for 60 years. And Ruth yeah. was once asked, have you ever thought about divorce? And she honestly said, divorce, no. Murder, yes, but not divorce. <laughs> and they both joked together because they were clearly best friends, clearly committed, 
but very, very, you know, both stubborn in many ways, not compatible, but so committed to God, so committed to each other. And so that the fruit of their marriage was just absolutely amazing. And so I think not even get so hung up on how compatible are we. We had some friends that got divorced because they believed they were completely incompatible. Then they both, this is a true story, set up an account on an online dating profile and this online service matched them with each other as the number one compatibility match in in our whole city. And they still didn't get back together. They were still committed to the fact that, no, I don't care what the computer said, I don't care what anybody says, we're, we're incompatible. Not, we're incompatible. Yes. And so you've got to look beyond this myth of the soulmate or even compatibility and say, what does it look like for us to learn from each other's differences, to serve each other through our differences, and to, and allow our commitment to be the most important thing? And you'll be amazed how compatible you'll become at that point. It's so true. And there's ways that we can do this. You know, we can do this by any time that there is an issue, just really talking about it, not shutting down. I think sometimes, you know, we may not necessarily think, oh, that's it, it's over, but we may be shut down emotionally. I think sometimes when there's differences, we'll just shut it down and we won't talk about it. But instead, we need to talk about it, talk about the hard things, because if we never address the hard things, then we're just never really going to get through it. They don't just magically disappear. You know, issues need to be worked through. And I think in the same way, we need to really watch our tone with one another. We really need to approach approach each other and assume the best of one another and always approach each other with respect. That tone is so huge. The tone of your words will shape the tone of your marriage. Yes. If you're speaking to each other with harshness, if you're giving the best of yourself to other people all day at work and wherever you are, and then you give the leftovers to your spouse when you get home, that's going to have an impact. Give yeah. the best of yourself to each other and you'll be amazed at what that does to bring out the best in you both. It's so true. You know, we'd love to continue the conversation with you all. So please go to marriagetoday.com and let us know what you think about this. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.